Hey all and welcome to our joyful home. Today's video is going to be birth prep. So I'm, how I'm preparing my body for labor and delivery. For those of you who are new, I am pregnant with our fourth baby and I am preparing for our third home birth. So everything I'm gonna be talking about today is going to be centered around getting my body ready in a natural way for natural labor and natural birth. Um, so I'm excited to get right into it and just a side note. I am 38 weeks pregnant I'm actually getting closer to 39 weeks, which is crazy um, and I have had My most recent baby was born at 39 weeks, so We shall see but anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into how I'm preparing my body flavor and birth And before we start um, you guys may notice I have some nasally sounding stuff going on right now. I just got over a cold, which isn't fun, but anyway, thankfully it's, it's over, but it's still like those symptoms of, that are just lingering. Um, so bear with me. Um, I sound a little funny, but um, anyway, um, I also am going to attempt to peel some potatoes while I film this because... I'm a very busy mother of four, well, almost four, and, um, you know, getting dinner prepped and everything takes time. So, anyway, going to do that, and then I also wanted to just kind of put a little disclaimer out there that the things I'm going to be talking about pertain to me and my experience and how I've, well, honestly, what's worked for me. This might not work for everybody, and so I would talk to your healthcare professional, your midwife, your chiropractor. Um, whatever, whoever you're using, um, to kind of just talk about what works for you or try these things and see if they work because they might not work for you and that's okay. But just a kind of a disclaimer out there, this isn't going to work for everybody. Maybe, you know, some people, the things I share doesn't work for them and that's okay. But hopefully in sharing what does work for me and what has helped me prepare my body for labor and birth will also help somebody else who would like to try these things or it's maybe your first time and you're really trying to figure it all out so hopefully this video is helpful also I will have um, chapters so if you want to skip through some of this you can so I will have chapters outlined so you can see the different topics we're going to be talking about so you can skip through those if you want okay so I've got my peeler and my potato <laughs> oh my goodness it's just as a busy mom life can kind of get busy so anyway all right, so the first thing I want to talk about is the physical part of preparing for labor um, and delivery. But anyway, and so physical with me actually goes a lot along the lines of walking, exercising, um, doing chiropractic care, um, really just taking care of your body and getting your body ready for labor. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about some specifics in those categories. So first I'm going to just kind of talk about exercise. Um, what do I do for exercise in, while I'm pregnant? And it's kind of differed, but I'm from each kid. Um, so I'm just going to kind of talk about what I'm doing now with this baby. Um, and I've done all of these things mostly with all of my other kids as well. So I have definitely, they've proven to me that they work and um, with my other babies. So anyway, but one of the main exercises that I feel helps me so much is just moving jumping and it doesn't have to be crazy jumping but getting your body to move that lymph your lymphatic system is all throughout your entire body and you're needing to move it daily and so a good way of doing that is like kind of jumping or making your body kind of go up and down a bit you can use your birth ball or exercise ball um, and you can kind of do that to kind of get your lymph moving um, tapping your different parts of your body can help kind of move that lymph around. Um, so what I like to do is kind of just move. Get my body first thing in the morning or whenever I'm exercising to kind of um, just move my body. And a lot of the times it is, it's in the morning. Um, it's not always the first thing in the morning that I do. First thing in the morning that I try to do is read my Bible and pray and really have time with God. And then I eat and then I kind of try and exercise. So, but anyway, in that time frame, before I get into the physical, some of the physical more specific exercises, 
I really try to kind of move my body and I try to put a clip in here of kind of what I do I like try to kind of jump up and down and it can be hard when you're pregnant um, so maybe do light just you know jostling your body a little bit shaking it um, shaking does a lot of good for your lymphatic system so shaking moving jumping whatever you can do to kind of get your lymphatic system moving is really good um, so that's something I focus on first. The next thing I like to focus on as far as exercising goes is a lot of breath work, breathing, relaxation. Um, and all that I'm talking about is not necessarily in like order. So I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head here of what I do every morning. Um, the, the, the one thing I, I, have I have talked about that is in order is getting your lymph moving. That is something I always try to put first. But everything else kind of just falls in line with that and it it isn't in order in any way. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm just gonna talk about the different exercises. So, um, breath work. Kind of just really focusing on your breathing. And with birth and labor, labor and birth, you definitely need to focus on how you're breathing. Um, you wanna do a lot of diaphra, diaphra, oh my word, I will put the word up here, diaphragm. I cannot say it for some odd reason. I know what the word is, and I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. But that kind of breathing, and you really want to focus on your diaphragm, breathing through your diaphragm. I believe that's what it's called. But anyway, I cannot yeah, get this stupid word out of my head. Anyway, focusing on your breathing technique. What is, what's the best way to breathe through labor, through stress, all that kind of breathing? really helps with labor and so um, I really try to do work on my breath work especially when I'm having contraction it can really help even if the contraction is a Braxton Hicks contraction so not necessarily the real thing it is but it's just not like labor contractions um, I try to breathe through all the contractions that I get throughout the day stop breathe it just gets my body into that rhythm of oh okay this is what I'm supposed to do with the contraction so breath work. Um, also, hips. Rotating your hips as much as possible. Uh, this really helps doing it on a ball. Um, you just want to really sit on that ball, kind of spread your legs out, open that pelvic floor, and rotate those hips. It can really help get that baby in the optimal birthing position um, and help that baby, if it's not head down, it can really help the baby kind of come on and down to that position. Um, so, hip movements back and forth hip movements, side to side, and around circular motions as well. Um, so anything like that is going to help a lot. Uh, next thing, squats. Squats, squats, squats. <laughs> squats are really good for getting your body ready for labor and delivery. It really opens up that pelvis. It can kind of help really stretch all those muscles and make it so it's easy to just kind of get it get that baby into that position so deep squats um try i try to do a couple different types of squats i'll do like just regular squatting with a ball in my hand so that i kind of exercise my arms as well um but i'll also do really deep deep squats um but yeah i'll try to do kind of a both um with the regular squats i'll try to do a good set of those probably just until i get a good sweat on um, once I'm done with that, then I'll go into a deep squat, um, or I'll do those deep squats, and I'll really just get down there, and I will just sit in that squat. Sometimes I'll go from side to side in the squat, or um, maybe I'll do some lunging, um, but really just opening up that pelvis, getting that baby in that optimal position. Squats are really great. Also, stretching your body, your ligaments, everything is really going to be important, or not necessarily your ligaments. Ligaments are already being stretched, but anyway, uh, stretching your body is going to help a lot. So if there's any stretches you can do, I like to do, um, like, I'll go from a squat, deep squat, to a standing position with my hands still on, with my hands still on the ground. And so it really stretches my back legs and my butt, and it can really help with, like, just stretching all those muscles and get your body actually ready for stretching because you'll stretch during labor and there'll be different positions that you want to try so helping your body become more limber is going to help so really focus on some stretching you can do some floor stretches where your like legs are out and you're stretching over the top of them and um, I can do that I do that it helps a lot 
Next exercise I want to talk about is hands and knees. Um, a lot of this can be done on the ball, but it can also just your hands and knees. Um, <clears throat> the ball method is like I will try to lean on the ball with my chest on the ball, my neck on the ball, my, my hands all on the ball, and then the rest of my body in the knees position. Um, and I will rock back and forth. Um, I'll also move my legs in and out kind of in this form of, um, so my legs will be on the, my knees will be on the floor and then my calves will be, um, kind of parallel to them and I will actually move them more outside, um, I would say away from, away from me and then I will rotate back and that really just opens the pelvis and I'll try to show a clip here of what I'm doing so it makes some sense but really just rocking back and forth and getting that pelvis opened in a way that um, will put baby in the un an optimal birthing position is going to help a lot so hands and knees and um, on the ball is really really comfortable it also can help alleviate some ligament pain if you're having that um, so it's really good back and forth um, kind of just rocking on the ball with you with your hands and knees can help um, so uh, <clears throat> so also hands and knees without the ball is great you can do a kind of I'm trying to remember the actual definition to this um, exact exercise but you're just you can also do like some bloom method exercises where you kind of let your belly hang on an on a exhale or on a sorry on an inhale and then on the exhale you kind of bring it back up as you breathe in so like um, I'm trying to remember how exactly it's okay so as you exhale you bring your stomach muscles back in so you use your breath to bring your belly up towards you and then when you are done exhaling you inhale and let it all out and that's like a you can look it up but it's like the bloom method is what I've heard it called referred to as um, and it can really help build your um, help with your ab separation and it can also help bring baby in the right position as well just a few other things I want to talk about um, as far as exercising goes walking is a really good one just walk I mean like I know walking has helped put me into labor a couple of times but just walk like really go around and if you can you know just really try to focus on some walks walk with your husband in the evening or walk with your kids in the morning or whatever I mean it it's amazing how much just simply walking can help all right the next kind of like exercise or thing physically that I am doing is a forward leaning inversion I try to do this like every day um, it doesn't always happen but it's kind of a, a form of spinning babies and it really gets the your baby in the optimal position so what you want to do is find a chair maybe something that's cushioned preferably get your get up on there kind of get on your knees and lean all the way forward from that chair um, and this can really help get that baby in the right position and so it can be a little uncomfortable because all the blood is rushing to your head <laughs> but I tell you so many people have swore by this and I really do think it's a really good idea I haven't done it as much with my other two or with my other three births but I have done it with this one and um, this baby stayed in the head down position almost the entire third trimester so um it's been very helpful and this baby's been very well engaged and all those things um, so anyway I would definitely highly recommend that but that is what I'm doing um, and then two other things I kind of want to add to the physical part of preparing is um, chiropractic care so the, this one I've been really bad about it with my other three well with my other my my most recent birth I did chiropractic care like Oh, I want to say for the last few weeks of pregnancy and it helped so much you want to make sure you get a chiropractor that knows about the Weber method and he one who specializes in that so remember Weber method when you're asking for a chiropractor and you are you know about to give birth because they're going to help you put that baby in the right birthing position especially if you have a breech baby they do wonders with flipping so chiropractic care definitely something that is I, I like to do I haven't been doing it much um, I actually just had one at 38 weeks, 
for the first time this pregnancy. It's terrible, I know. Um, but I will be continuing to do that up until birth. Definitely get a chiropractor if you can. And the last little thing I want to talk about with like your physical aspect of getting ready um, is your posture. So um, really focus on when you are sitting. So as I'm sitting now, I try to sit up as much as possible. I was probably leaning a little bit. But um, you want to have really good posture as much as possible um, and keep that belly forward. So don't lean and scrunch in like this because it's really bad for your posture, but it's also really bad for like putting that baby in the right position. So if you can tilt your pelvis forward, your belly will go forward and your baby actually will be in a better position and most likely it will help that baby get into the position you want it to. So really focus, focus on sitting forward and upright. Um, the best way to do that is on a ball, honestly. I sit on the ball a lot. <laughs> and it just, it makes it hard for me to have a bad posture. So really focus on your posture. Also, not laying back or leaning back so much. So don't lay on your back because it's not a great idea for many different reasons, but especially for baby's position. Um, laying on your side is preferable. Um, actually, on your left side, they say is most preferable, but a lot of the times I just write on my right side and it hasn't really changed that much. Anyway, your posture can have a lot to do with how your baby is sitting in the position of the baby and your comfort level, to be honest. All of these things that I've done, all these exercises, I know it took a while to get through them all, but have really helped me feel so much better in this pregnancy than I have with my others. And the more I do with each pregnancy as far as exercises go, and they don't have to be crazy, none of these are extreme. Um, these are all very gentle exercises that can help a lot and they've changed over time. I used to run when my pregnancy with earlier in this pregnancy and now I don't, um, just because I'm, I'm huge. <laughs> At 38 weeks it's just running and jumping really hard is not great so I jump, jump lightly and do what I can um, and all of these you know can be interchangeable you don't have to do all of these um, but try them and see if you like them and see if they help you so also something I kind of want to touch on um, before we end the physical aspect of all of this um, all this birth prep for your body um, I kind of want to emphasize some things on sex if you can have sex, if it's a like feel good thing that you enjoy doing, do it. Have lots of it with your husband. Um, that's all I'm really gonna say. It can really help progress, get you into labor for one. But which I'm really not talking about necessarily. I'm I'm just talking about preparing your body. But actually, sex can actually help all those hormones and all that physical stuff get ready. <laughs> Um, and so it can, it, I mean, sex is one of the things that people like to say is the natural method of putting people into labor. Um, and so there's that little nugget for you, but, um, but yeah, try it, see if that kind of helps along. It definitely can give you some contractions, but I found it to help my body kind of get some, cause, uh, when you have it, I definitely get contractions and contractions do help me kind of prepare for labor. So that's kind of where my mind goes, but. Anyway, I just kind of want to make a quick note, quick note of that. So the next thing I want to talk about is some natural must-haves that I take internally. Uh, so like some things that can help my labors progress. Um, also just help my body prepare. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, red raspberry leaf tea. So this is, or pregnancy tea. Every pregnancy tea should have red raspberry leaf tea in it. Just make sure you buy a high quality one. Um, but red raspberry leaf, um, can really help tone the uterus and get it ready for labor and delivery um, and it can really it's just it's a great source for women's health in general um, I love it and I've taken it with like I've taken it pregnant with my pregnancies I, I've taken it with my breastfeeding and just for cycles um, I mean it's a great all-around thing for women in general but it's especially great for toning that uterus and getting that uterus ready for birth and can kind of help with the labor process and not and uh, help it not to be so prolonged. Um, so that and with my pregnancy tea, I like to add nettle leaf and um, rose hips and then some fenugreek seeds in there as well. I don't have an actual recipe, but I use about a uh, like eight cup uh, glass container that I put my tea in, and so I'll I'll make that tea and it will make about three quarts worth 
of tea and so I just kind of fill the bottom with leaves and most of uh, most of it is red raspberry leaf tea the second most used herb in there would be nettle and then the least amount of herbs I would be like um, the uh, rose hips and fenugreek I just sprinkle in there um, you can kind of change it around to see what you like but there's lots of different herbs that you can take while pregnant um, but that's kind of what I, my pregnancy tea consists of and sometimes I'll add honey other times I'll have some stevia other times I'll just drink it like it is and that's just it is what it is but it'll make three quarts and I'll put those in the fridge and when I will drink a quart a day so so that's the first thing the second thing is dates eat your dates if you can stand them if they're terrible to you then just don't go for it but there is proven scientific evidence that dates every single like especially from the time of 33 weeks to 30 to birth essentially um, that is when they are the most helpful but they tone the uterus they make they have um, they've been proven to make labors quicker and shorter um, there's also t a ton of different research on dates so if you're willing to eat dates then I would highly re recommend looking into it um, dates are really good for getting your body ready for labor and making your labor shorter. So I take those once a day, or I take about six once a day. So of course it starts to like rain like crazy while I try to finish up this video. So hopefully you guys can hear me. It's literally like lasting a few seconds. It seems to be fine now. I don't know. Anyway, so I moved. But um, so yeah, dates are great. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is this tincture that I like to take. And it's called Gentle Birth. Um, also, I will link all of this stuff in the description below if you're interested in looking into it um, and where I buy it and all that kind of stuff. So you can look out for that down in the description below. But anyway, it's called Gentle Birth and it has a lot of different herbs that can help get your uterus, get your body ready for labor. But it's called uh, Gentle Birth and you can look at, it's on Amazon, it's on multiple sites and then they obviously sell it um, from the company that sells it but um anyway so and yes these are affiliate links so when you buy through my links i get a commission so um but i do need to let you all know that so um but yeah any of the affiliate links down below i do earn a small commission from if you purchase so okay anyway so that was the one tincture that i i take to kind of help prepare my body for labor the next thing I take is magnesium to kind of help my body loosen up and relax and get those get my muscles in a right um, feeling good. Magnesium is a great tool for that and magnesium, most women, most men in the United States especially are all low in magnesium. So taking it especially while pregnant because you're already being depleted of minerals in some shape or form. Um, and a lot is getting taken from you. So upping your magnesium is going to help you have smoother labors. It's going to help your body get prepared better. So it takes the magnesium. The one I take is from Trace Minerals. Um, you can, I'm trying to think it's, I think it's from, uh, I'm trying to remember the exact form of it, but anyway, um, I will again link it down below and I will show it up here as well so that you can see what I do take. But magnesium. Another thing I like to take is a supplement that I like is that is called Fortune Delight and it is an herbal herbal drink and it has so many different beneficial um, hydrating herbs and so they can really help with your hydration and so they can be a form of herbal um, electrolytes uh, so they can really help with your water intake and um, keeping up your electrolyte in electrolyte intake but um, I also think that's really important when preparing your body for labor and delivery to just keep your water intake your um, anything that can give you really good electrolytes and um, benefits in that way can help you have help your body get ready better and also have your let your help your labor just go better um, a vitamin C is a great thing to take. Make sure it's a whole food vitamin. Um, I do not take an actual vitamin C. I have kind of off and on throughout this pregnancy. Um, I actually take um, the herb that I talked about earlier in my tea, which is um, rose hips, has a high form of vitamin C in it. 
And so that is what I personally use um, for the vitamin C intake. I'm sure there's a lot of other ways that you can incorporate vitamin C. Um, like I said, I've taken vi different forms of whole food vitamin C um, throughout this whole pregnancy, um, but I couldn't like tell you one specific but uh, rose hips are a great form of it. So that's kind of all I take internally and prepare for. Um, the next thing I kind of want to talk about a little bit, and I'm just going to touch on this, is nutrition. Um, I want to do a different video on how I've taken care of my body nutritionally this pregnancy and in pregnancy in general, um, and that will be in a different video. But real quick, I did want to just kind of talk about nutrition because nutrition falls in um, that line of preparing your body for birth. Um, your body needs to be have nutrition in order for it to get prepare well for your labor but also do well while in labor you really need a good nutrition you really need good nutrition um, and so some of the things I do for that is just eating really healthy right now for those of you who don't know um, I am on a cleanse right now it's a gut cleanse it's it's not a detox it's nothing harmful to baby or I or anything that's going to be too rough on the baby it's a very gentle and it's been proven on pregnant and breastfeeding moms um, but it's called, um, it's by Only Organics, only with O-N-E, O-N-L-E. And um, it's from a, a mom who kind of just created it. And she had um, a lot of gut issues and with her, her children. And so, um, anyway, she has, she has this really great business. And I'll be talking more about my gut and everything. But anyway, focusing on eating healthy and I am on a cleanse so I do take a silver solution it's a very different silver solution than anyone has probably heard of um, and a really high quality probiotic and that can help clean my gut out and so with all that I have to eat a really good healthy diet um, so I'm I'm not eating any dairy wheat sugar um, and so those are the kind of things that I'm just keeping out for the for the remainder of my cleanse and I'm halfway through it and I'm feeling really good um, as far as my gut goes. So really focusing on that because also something to keep in mind is that your baby's gut micro, my, microbiome, it gets its microbiome from you when it is vaginally born. And so um, it, a lot of what their, their microbiome and their gut looks like depends on what your gut is like. So it really evicted me to focus on my gut. Nutritionally, that's really what I'm focusing on is eating well and cleansing my gut and then I'm not gonna go over the, all the different supplements I take because that would just make this video very long but I will be talking about it in a future video hopefully here very soon um, so stay tuned for that okay so I actually had to come inside because it was blowing outside like crazy it's actually it's insane when I'm done this when I'm done with this I'll have to like turn the camera around and show you guys it's a little crazy We've had a lot of different storms lately. Anyway, so the last thing I want to talk about is preparing your mind mentally, preparing mentally. It's not just about the physical aspect of preparing for labor and delivery. There's a lot, a lot to do with your head, what you're thinking, how you're thinking it, what you're thinking about, all those things. Um, and so I wanted to talk about that real quick. One of the ways I like to prepare my mind for labor and delivery, for labor and birth, is actually watching positive home birth videos or birth videos in general. I try to stay away from the traumatic ones just because that can get me in a really bad headspace and putting yourself in a negative, bad headspace before labor is just not a good idea. So really watching those positive birth stories can help so much and it can really get you into the groove of thinking about birth and um, about how labor's gonna go and all those different things can get you in a positive thought process. And the next thing, getting your mind in the right focus. So focusing on anything that, what could go wrong or like really focusing on all those kinds of things, probably not a great idea. Um, you can gently, t like I think you should have been thinking about that earlier. Now that you're closer to labor and birth you really should be focusing on the positive and putting your mind in the right the right mindset because you need that you need your thoughts to be positive and thinking about those things and it's not wrong to think about things that could go wrong but if you're dwelling on them it's not going to help your labor progress at all um, or your body prepare for it it's actually going to put your body in a flight or f uh, what is it called a a flight response so like a stressful response 
um, <clears throat> that's not good because that can actually make labor harder. It can also um, put you in a spot where your body does not want to go into labor and can prolong your body to be ready for that. Um, and so when your mind is at ease, then things will go better and will most likely happen quicker. Um, and so that's just something to really think about. All those things are really good, um, I'd say, but the thing that helps me the most with my mind is actually praying to the Lord and asking him to help me through labor, help me get ready, help me get ready for birth and labor and really talk to him about it, be open and have, um, just ask him to help me with my labor and help me get ready help me to do the right thing, um, make the right decisions, be in the right mindset. Um, and so what really helps me the most is reading my Bible, meditating on his word, praying to him and asking him for guidance because he's the one who's going to put my mind at ease. He's the one that's gonna give me peace and comfort. Um, and if you don't have that, you can reach out to me and I'd be happy to talk to you about that. How you can have a relationship with Christ but um, I have a relationship with the Lord and he has helped me through so many of my labors and he's helped me with all of them actually and I am so thankful for him and he's the one he gives me an inner peace that I would not have without him and so he's the one that kind of puts my mind in perspective gives me the positive thoughts if I dwell on his scripture meditate on his word pray to him and ask for his guidance that is going to be the best form of mind prep for labor and delivery. Something to remember, he promises to get us through the hardest times in our life. He promises to be there for us. And that right there, that promise is so just amazing. And it makes everything just wow. Like he's there for me always. Other people will fail me, he will never fail me. And so that is just something to keep in mind. Read his word, focus on it, really dwell on it, and it's going to help you get through that. Remember some scripture verses too can be helpful. Um, so, all right, so those are the things that I do to prepare my body for labor and delivery. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have anything you would add to this list. Um, let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to know. Um, but yeah, and stay tuned for more con pregnancy content and getting ready for labor content. It will be coming hopefully soon. Unless I have the baby, like, you know, in the next two days, then there might be less content for that. <laughs> but um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, let me know your thoughts below. And I, again, will make sure to put all of the things I talked about that I can linked below. So hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will see you guys in our next video. Bye.